The following recording is from the pulpit at Northwest Baptist Church in Bradenton, Florida. For more sermons, please visit our website, nwbcbradenton.org. We'd also love to hear how you have been blessed by this ministry, so please let us know by emailing us at office at nwbcbradenton.org. Well, I've been your pastor now for a little over 11 years now. And during that time, I've had one aim. My desire was to bring this church to be a more faithful and biblical church. My parents always taught me to leave a place better than when I had found it when I got there. Whenever I'd ever go to a friend's house, my mother threatened me that I better clean up before I came home. Well, I've taken that principle here in how I've pastored Northwest Baptist Church. For the record, I'm not going anywhere. However, one day, the Lord will call me home. And my desire when I'm gone is for people to say that Dan's legacy, if I have any, is that he led Northwest Baptist Church to be more biblical and faithful for the glory of God. That I have left it Better than I found it. And the only way to do that is to structure ourselves and reform according to God's word. And for the last 11 years, we've been doing that. We've been, I've been leading you on a journey. It's taken a long time. (laughs) A lot of patience. And leading you on this journey to be a more biblical, healthier church. In doctrine... Praise God, we have the 1689 Confession of Faith now as our confession. In worship, we execute the regular principle of worship. We structure everything according to the Word of God. We read the Word, sing the Word, pray the Word, see the Word, and pray the Word every Sunday. But now we come to the structure. The structure of the church must also be biblical. And I'm very blessed what God has done here over the last 11 years. And my brothers and I at the Gospel Forum have a saying that we end each episode with. And if you watch our episodes, well, if you should watch our episodes. We always end each episode with, keep on reforming. Oh, you just, I'll tell you. (laughs) All right, Donna was going to cry earlier. I think I'm going to cry now. Keep on reforming. Keep on reforming. Why? Because we're, we're bound to get off track. We're bound to get sideways. And the only thing we must align ourselves continually is God's word. We're not reforming according to traditions. We're not reforming because of denominations. We actually left the SBC. We're not reforming because of our preferences. We're reforming because of the Word of God. In doctrine, in worship, and in structure. And so, we come now to our next step of biblical fidelity. And that is a plurality of elders. For the last 11 years, I have been the only recognized elder of this church. We weren't ready for elders when I got here. There was a lot of teaching and discipling and training that needed to happen. However, even though we did not have elders, we were still led by a plurality of men. In lieu of not having other elders, we treated our deacons as if they were elders, even though they're not. Because that's better than the alternative, This has served us well until the Lord brought us men who are willing, qualified, and capable. And I have prayed long for this day to be the case, that the Lord would raise up elders here at this church. And I'm pleased to announce to you that he has. Today, I'm going to announce to you three elder candidates. This is the big announcement I teased earlier in the week. To establish a biblical plurality of eldership at Northwest Baptist Church. This was made possible by years of teaching and prayer. 
But also in January, we changed our bylaws to adopt a plurality of elder governance in this church. So it's not only in accordance with the scriptures, but also in accordance with our new bylaws, which I told you at the time we were not ready yet to present elders, but we will soon. Well, here we are in July and we're presenting them. The beautiful thing about these three men is that all three of them have already served as elders in previous churches. They have already had the experience necessary and all three of them feel the call and the desire to serve this church as elders. All three of these men have preached here multiple times. You've heard them preach at least three or four times or more. And they all three have unique personalities. There's no doubt about that. They all have unique giftings. And they all have unique experiences that will be a blessing to this body for years to come. I'm going to introduce them now and I'm going to have them come forward. The first man is a man that you know very well. He's been a member of this church for about eight or nine years. And that's Fred Loskamp. Fred, would you come? Let's welcome Fred as he comes up here. Fred is a godly man. A man with much wisdom, love, and care for God's people. Fred has a passion for prayer, godliness, and for your holiness. Fred truly has a pastor's heart. Fred is a retired pastor. He has served in churches for many years, served in the Lord for a long time in places, and also served as a missionary in India as well. Fred brings to this church as a potential elder a unique gifting and passion for prayer, one that must be birthed and utilized, and we must grow all the more in we need to do better about being a praying people. Fred leads our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Right now, we literally just have a handful of people. I'd love to see that room packed out and this building packed out every Wednesday as our brother leads us in prayer. He's actually preached the most here, 16 times over the years he's been here. And I love this man very much. The next two men are men that have been here for the last two years. In fact, they both came the same month. Talk about God answering the prayer and just dropping it in our laps at the same time. The next man I want to introduce to you, which you already know as well, is Randall Miller. Randall, will you come up here? Let's welcome Randall as he comes. Randall was an elder at Sarasota Reformation Church before coming here to be a member of Northwest Baptist Church. We've all seen Randall's tender heart and compassion. He's a teacher of God's Word. Currently, he's teaching our Sunday school class and has already made hospital visits and called on people for me. He is eager and willing to serve. And Randall brings to this church as a potential elder a desire and deep love for discipleship. And he can really help us move forward, especially in that way. And last but not least, we have Jeff Bear. Jeff, will you come? <clears throat> Jeff has served as an elder in Portland, Maine, before moving here to Florida to become a member of Northwest Baptist Church. Jeff is an encourager. He's already been a modern-day Barnabas to me in many ways. Jeff, as a potential elder, brings to this church a great desire for evangelism. Jeff certainly has a boldness, a fervor in sharing Christ with the lost. Jeff has done much street evangelism and open-air preaching in Maine. And evangelism is his passion. Isn't it? just like God, to take three of our greatest weaknesses as a church. And when I mean weaknesses, things that we can improve on. 
And then give us men who are qualified to be elders with these giftings and desire and bring them to us. Prayer, discipleship, and evangelism. Things that I have tried to stir in this body for 11 years. To some degree, okay. In other degrees, not so good. This is why a plurality of men are necessary. For I cannot do it alone. So what do we do from here? I want you to pray and seek God over these next two months. These men are elder candidates. Meaning I am presenting them to you for affirmation. In September we will hold a historic vote to affirm these three men as elders of Northwest Baptist Church to align ourselves with a plurality of elders according to the Bible's standard of our church. As your pastor, I'm asking you to affirm these men. This is not an election for one man. I know we're in election season right now and things are crazy. They're not comp- campaigning against each other. This is not an election for that right. We are affirming their calling and gifting to serve in this way. And we will do so in September. We'll do so for the sake of biblical fidelity, first and foremost. For the sake of the future of this church and its ongoing health and reformation. And also for the sake of my spiritual, mental, and emotional well-being. As pastors need pastors. And others to shoulder the load. All right, man, you can sit down. Thank you. I know you have many questions, which is why I've prepared a novel for you to read. (laughs) Um, It is 38 pages. Not all of it is mine. I have created a frequently asked questions, an FAQ of 21 of the most likely questions you have about elders and how they will function here at Northwest Baptist Church. There is also included here a questionnaire that each of these men have filled out so you can get to know them some more. These are available out in the lobby in the Welcome Center on the table. Please take one before you go, read it, and be in much prayer as we look forward to the September affirmation vote. It's all about being biblical, friends. It's all about doing it God's way. We're not to do things our way. It's God's way. God has given us elders as a gift until we get to heaven to care for our souls. And our souls need a lot of caring. Let's pray for these men. Let's pray for our church.